Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be continuing with the abstract algebra series. So this time we will be talking about um, the cyclic groups. So before I'll start with uh, the discussion today, I'd like to say thank you first to all of you guys for all your support. And if ever you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And um, if you have topics that you would like me to discuss on my vlog, you can comment down here on the comment section below so that I would know. So let's start now. So given that you have a group G and then um, such group G has a subset, let's call this as X, and that subset is a non-empty one, then um, you have a family of all subgroups of G. We denote this by um, the symbol. So <clears throat> the intersection of all subgroups is called the subgroup of G generated by this set X and is denoted by this symbol. In fact, this intersection is already proven on the previous video um, I have discussed on the subgroup criterion. So here's the thumbnail down here. So intuitively, given that you have a group G and you have subsets HI, so let's say H1, you have H2, you have H3, and so on. So it's the intersection of all subgroups, that's the X here. So that's actually the, the one that generates the g the one that generates the intersection of all hi that's it so the elements of x are the generators of the subgroup generated by x which may also be generated by another set another subsets rather so we, we may have in this case as this where these sets here are not equal that's it so if your x is actually the set containing a1 to a n so instead of writing this we may write to be more specific we may write this so if g is equal to um the group generated by these sets then g here is finitely generated and although G is finitely generated, it doesn't mean that, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that G should be finite. Okay, in fact, we can cite an example for that. So suppose our G here is this one. So the set Z together with the plus operation. If you notice, Z is not finite, so this is infinite. But this is actually generated by 1. So... That means to say that G is finitely generated. So if A is an element of G here, the subgroup, this one, is what we call the cyclic subgroup. And this cyclic subgroup is generated by A. So we will introduce this theorem here as actually a connection of what our discussion about the cyclic subgroups and cyclic groups. Now, if you have a group G here, and um, given that you have a non-empty subset of G, which is, in this case, we denote that by X. So this X consists of all finite products of this form, where your AIs are elements in X and your N sub I's are integers. In particular, if you have A as an element of a group G, the subgroup generated by A is of this form. So that's it. So to take note of that, let's say for example you have um, uh, you have one here. So the one here is of this form. That is, your n is an element of z. So we will prove this theorem if this theorem actually holds. Let's consider a set H here, and I want my set H to be the set containing this one. Where, of course, you define this ai to be in x, your n sub i to be integers, and then your t should be finite. The reason why I want my h to be, look, to be looking like this because my goal here is that 
my h must be the subgroup of g and it must be equal to x to prove the claim here so uh, let me uh, so our first goal is that we have to show first that this h is a subgroup of g now of course clearly uh we're sure that h is a subset of g here okay that's pretty obvious in the sense that um the h contains of this form and these are actually elements of g um the fact that x is assumed to be non-empty then this implies that there exists an a in x and note that since that's an a you can write a equals a to the one one is an integer meaning to say that your uh, a here is an element of h implying your h is non-empty we will um assume two elements so let's say a b in h here and um with your a here is written like this your b is written like this of course your um ai your bj are elements of x and um your ni and your sj are elements of z so that means they're integers your uh k and uh, t here are finite and they're elements of natural number we will have to define the inverse the inverse if i'm gonna take the inverse this, basically this is just a product of this so meaning to say i can write this as b sub k negative sk that's the inverse right and then i have b sub 1 negative s sub 1 okay so meaning to say that if i'm gonna multiply my a b inverse i can write this in this way a1 n1 up until a t n t and that's b k negative s k up until b1 negative s1 so observe that your ai um your ai and your bj are in x your um t and k here are in natural numbers if you're gonna add the t and k here because they're all exponent there of uh, subscripts of exponents they're both actually finite so that the sum of two finite sets fi finite numbers rather are actually is actually finite so which means to say that this also this one here holds the same criteria for the format of writing elements in um, h therefore a b inverse is an element in h implying that your h is a subgroup of g that's it so if you have question or clarification you can comment down there so that i would know okay now that we've shown that h is a subgroup of g we will show first that h is a subset of this and then later on we will reverse this process so we will consider here um the set hi um such that i is in i and then um your x is a subset of hi um uh, and this hi is a subgroup of g remember this by definition that this is this is the subgroup of g that contains the x okay so by definition this implies that this is equal to this If you let y to be uh, in h, then by definition, y can be written like this, where your aj is in x, your nj is in z, and your t is um finite and is an element of natural number so since x is a subset of hi what does it mean this is for all i in i so it follows that aj is an element of hi meaning to say that this is also an element of hi for all i in i and since remember that hi is a subgroup of g for all i in i 
Then, by closure property, we have y equals a1, n1, up until a sub t, n t, and this is element of hi. This is by closure property since the fact that hi is a subgroup. And um, this is for all i in i. This follows that your y is an element of the intersection of hi, i in i. But the intersection of hi, this is the subgroup generated by x. Implying that your h is a subgroup of x. That's it. So we're the, uh, we've done with the claim that um, this holds. And so um, we will show that the subgroup generated by x is also a subset of h. So note that uh, for all a in x, um, you can write a equals a to the 1. And 1 is an integer, so this is element of h. And uh, by definition, your x is non-empty, and this is a subset of h, and your h is a subgroup of g, which implies that your h is equal to the set containing hi, such that your x is a subset of h, and this is a subgroup of g, implying that the subgroup generated by x is a subset of h since what? The subgroup generated by x is the smallest subgroup of g that contains x. So finally, we have concluded that this is equal to this. And um, in particular, if your x is the set containing a, then the subgroup generated by a is actually the same subgroup generated by x. And this is equal to h. And it's of the form a1, a sub, n sub 1 up until a. I'm sorry, I don't need to write this as a1. So it's just a um, n sub t. And that's um, n i in z. And your t is finite. Okay. And um, note that this is just the same as by basic algebra. This is n1 plus up until n sub t. That's n i in z. And t is finite. And so n1 plus n t collectively that's equal to n. So that's e8 n, n in z. So that's all. So if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there so that I would know. So we will supply that with the following examples. Number one, the additive group Z is an infinite cyclic group with generator one. So that means we can write this z equals this one. And why is that? Because um, you note that m times 1 is actually m for every m in z. That's it. Number 2, the trivial subgroup E is cyclic, of course, because any element let's say given you have a group g so any element a in g um a times e is always a that's it number three the group c together with the multiplication is actually a group where where the subgroup generated by i is actually the same as this so this is a cyclic group cyclic subgroup rather of order four number four for every m the additive group that is the zm this is cyclic of order m that is this one that's it 
so that's all for now and thank you so much for watching again um if you would like to request a topic you would like me to discuss just comment down there so thank you again guys and have a great day